Okay, good uh, afternoon, good morning, good evening, um, wherever you're, you're connecting in from. Um, my name is Emma Dickens from the Enterprise Excellence Network and welcome to the um, series which we're running together with Daryl Powell and Professor Peter Hines today. Um, so today Daryl will be speaking on rethinking Lean as a learning system. Uh, just before we get to that, I just wanted to introduce the Enterprise Excellence Network, um, which is a members only arena for senior lean leaders in Europe, founded by Peter. And um, the network usually um, includes quarterly benchmarking events at um, Shingo award winning or best practice host sites led by Peter. And these webinar series have really been set up um, during the, the, the pandemic um, as a way of just continuing to engage people um, and, and also for a bit of fun. Um, but if you'd like to find out a bit more about the Enterprise Excellence Network, as well as the upcoming webinars, which we're running every, um, every couple of months, then please visit our website, um, which you will find in a follow-up email. Um, and it's the enterpriseexcellencenetwork.com. So this webinar will include 30 minute um, presentation by Daryl and then afterwards there'll be a dedicated 30 minutes for a Q&A session. Um, so if you're able to ask your questions via the questions tab, um, which you'll see in your, your panel, um, and then Peter Hines will deliver those to Daryl um, at the end. You are able to ask questions throughout the webinar and we'll try our best to distribute those to Daryl, but the, the 30 minutes at the end is very much dedicated for them. Okay, so now I'm going to hand over to Professor Peter Hines um, just to give a bit of more background into himself and to introduce Daryl as well. Thank you, Peter. Thank, thank you very much, Emma, and uh, hello to everyone uh, joining us today. Um, I'm very pleased to welcome Daryl Powell to, to this session and uh, in spite of the fact that he sounds Norwegian, he's really Welsh, so that's really an important <laughs> thing to say as I'm sitting here in Wales on a very sunny day. Um, so I, I've, I've known Daryl for, for a number of years and um, he's, he's one of those rare breed of people that sort of span between um, doing some of this stuff and doing research into this uh, sort of lean lean area. So um, some of you be familiar with uh, some of the papers and so forth that he's written, um, and, and also some very good stuff. Uh, I think his organisation in Norway before he went back into the research side won uh, the Lena Forum Award in Norway as the best uh, Norwegian site for uh, for for lean. And also, um, a couple of years ago, together with Chorba Netland, he uh, received a Shingo Research Award for uh, a publication that uh, he um, he edited. So that's uh, very great. So, looking forward to hearing what you've uh, what you're going to talk about, Daryl. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, and thank you very much for a kind invitation to to run a webinar for uh, for you today. I think it's. Uh, it's great to have the opportunity to do that from sunny Norway, and I have to I have to correct you. Sorry, Peter, I'm I'm not Welsh. No, <laughs> we're trying to adopt I Welsh, all these. I have a Welsh I have a Welsh surname, of course. Uh, <laughs> I must admit I, I'm pretty selective when it comes to being Welsh or, or English, depending on who's doing better in the rugby. <laughs> okay. Um, but, okay. Thanks. So. <laughs> The, the title of my uh, my uh, presentation today is Rethinking Lean as a Learning System. And uh, really the, the promise of lean thinking and practice is still enormous, right? Uh, those that have uh, realized the effect of lean, I mean, they, they, they really have uh, outdone every, everybody else they're competing with. But of course, many, many have joined this lean journey and not succeeded. I mean, I think research shows that 90% of, uh, of companies that start a, a lean transformation fail to realize the, the uh, intended result of their, uh, of their journey. And I think, I think we, we're all on a, a personal journey, um, albeit we select different paths. Okay, um, some of us select similar paths um, to, to carry out our journey. Uh, many of us actually select the, the path of least resistance. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, naturally we're, we're lazy creatures, I think. Um, but when we realize that lean is a different way of thinking, 
when Lee, when we realize that lean is a cognitive transformation rather than an organizational one, I think that's when the special things start to happen. Um, so some years ago, um, I, I discovered an alternative path, a more challenging path, and that is uh, through addressing a lean transformation as a learning system. And that's what I'm going to share with you uh, with you today. Uh, but I'd like to begin with uh, one of these uh, polls. Um, so Emma, I'm not sure if you can uh, activate the first poll. It's a it's a choice. Pick pick whichever answer you feel most uh, <laughs> comfortable with. Is lean a process improvement methodology to gain competitiveness through identifying and eliminating waste? Or is it a learning system to gain competitiveness through continuously developing people? Just an interesting to gauge what the perspective of the audience is today. Okay, I've just launched that poll, Daryl. Okay. Do we get it? Do we get an immediate response, Emma? Uh, we just wait for everyone to vote, and then yeah, it's it's pretty pretty immediate. <laughs> okay. I take some uh, good Norwegian coffee. While we wait. Okay, I just uh, realised that on part of the poll, it's actually cut off some of the sentence. So I just want to, um, okay. to just let you know that the first one is lean is a process improvement methodology to gain competitiveness through identifying and eliminating waste, or lean is a learning system to gain competitiveness through continuously developing people. So for option one, Daryl, we have 27% who said Lean is a process improvement methodology to gain competitiveness through identifying okay. and eliminating waste. And then 80% said lean is a learning system to gain competitiveness through continuously developing people. Wow, that's excellent. Uh, I almost uh, I almost don't need to continue with this uh, presentation today. I, there's, there's no one to convince here. Huh? But I'm sure I'm sure we can try and convince 27% of you to try and think a little differently throughout the, the presentation. Thank you for that. Um, so a few years ago, I took a trip to Japan. I mean, I've been working with uh, Lean for yeah over 15 years, uh, both in industry and uh, in academia, studying and leading Lean transformations. But I'd never taken the trip to Japan. Um, and really, had, had I taken this trip uh, before, maybe I would have thought differently from the outset. But uh, some of you may recognize this statement from, from Toyota, good products from good thinking. Um, and it, it actually is, is uh, in line with the culture at Toyota that uh, to make good products, first you have to make good people. Um, and interestingly there is that we have two Ps, products and people, but not process. Yet somehow lean became lost in translation um, in the West in that the focus became on processes only. And in fact, in some cases, we, we, we even forget about the customer and about people completely during these uh, lean transformations, which is scary. Um, but from, from that moment, the product really became this the central part of of the lean transformation. It's kind of the platform for which we build and develop uh, skills in people to improve uh, and perfect the products which we're delivering to the customers. Uh, now also, in, uh, as, Peter, uh, as Peter stated, that we, in 2017, we were lucky enough to win the uh, first Shingo Institute Research Award for this uh, publication, The Routledge Companion to Lean Management. And in this book, we, we considered applications of lean throughout the, the lean enterprise. So from product development through production to after sales services, for example. 
The second part of the book, we considered lean applications across different um, across different environments. So from lean policing um, to to lean law, lean education, uh, lean healthcare. And in the last chapter, we really uh, summarized the findings from all of these different uh, settings. And one thing that that stood out for us was it was three three things in fact three L's and that was leadership and long-term perspective were critical to the success of a lean transformation but the third L was learning and really for us it was continuous improvement and learning which are essential for for succeeding in this uh, lean transformation so we can say that lean thinking is ultimately about creating a learning organization and uh, likewise if improvement without a focus on learning is not lean thinking if we look back at Toyota, one thing we, 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 we discovered at uh, Toyota is that Sekichi Toyota, the, the founder of Toyota Industries, was very much um, led by his reading of a Japanese translation of Samuel Smiles' book, Self-Help. Um, and in this book, it's very much focusing on knowledge, on wisdom, learning and improvement. Um, so the book itself is actually, uh, it, it was a primer for, for, um, for the poor, for poor people, in that it governed them to, to help them to self-educate and uh, mobilize their, their learning uh, journeys. So where education is not provided, a man has a duty to educate himself. And when we look back at uh, Sakichi Toyoda being very much governed by this book, and uh, later on Kichiro Toyoda, who, who founded the uh, Toyota Motor Company, he, 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 was, he visited the, um, the university in, in Tokyo back in the 1930s and asked uh, Professor Honda, can we make uh, automobiles with Japanese hands and brains? So it was this very much from the outset, learning to do everything, learning everything from scratch to be able to produce automobiles in Japan. Um, other uh, Japanese automobile producers, of course, buy uh, bought licenses from other Western vehicle manufacturers. But Toyota did everything from scratch, learning everything from scratch. Um, <clears throat> if we take a trip back now down memory lane, um, back to Wales, Peter. Uh, I started my career in uh, 2000, around 2005, working for Scheffler UK, Ina Bearings in Llanetli. Um And there in 2001, we went through a, uh, a culture change program with the title Al Greater Than C. And this stood for the rate of learning greater than the rate of change. Now, it's based very much on the work of Reg Revens um, and Action Learning. Uh, and he quite rightly said that in, in any epoch of rapid change, organizations that uh, are unable to adapt are soon in trouble because ad adaptation is uh, only possible through learning. Um, so, so it really was uh, part and parcel with the lean transformation at the inner bearings back in those days in South Wales, learning greater than the rate of change. But the problem is, what are we learning? Now, what we, what we can uh, summarize here is that because Toyota's learning practices, and this is more or less the, the, the fine print of any lean transformation, um, because the learning practices consist of tools and techniques, it becomes much too easy to interpret lean simply as a set of best practices to learn and implement. Uh, but the lean transformation, it's much less about learning and implementing uh, lean practices and it's actually more about learning how to learn. Um, and this is interesting. It's been it's been the theme of my uh, research now for the past uh, three to four years. Um, and I've gone back again to to Reg Revens and the the action learning movement, uh, based around this simple formula here, which you see now: learning is equal learning L is equal to program knowledge P, and questioning inside Q. Um, so Revens himself, he distinguished between two types of problems. So one being a complex organizational problem, which is a real problem, or simple puzzles. And puzzles, he said, can be solved by program knowledge, P. And program knowledge is it's the stuff we can read in books. It's the stuff we can learn about on courses at university. 
Uh, it's the stuff we learn about in our uh, our lean green belt, our lean yellow belt, and black belt courses. It's the program knowledge of lean. Uh, but if we approach a lean transformation simply as a puzzle, we're pretty much not going to realize the the true effect of lean. So we need to combine questioning and insight with the uh, with the program knowledge P. Um, and if we look again back at Toyota, this is really the way they've they've set out on their journey um, to become the best automaker in the world, uh, with the uh, volumes of Volkswagen and the uh, profitability of BMW. How can we optimize the design, manufacture, and delivery of our products? Now, this is a typical question that we may ask when we're starting out a, a lean journey. Huh? How can we optimize the design, manufacture, and delivery of our products? For Toyota, they asked a very different question. Um, and that was, in fact, how can we discover better ways to design, manufacture, and deliver better products? So by learning and evolving from one change to another, always looking to the next step, we're able to constantly discover new ways to both design, manufacture, and deliver better products. Uh, whereas here, uh, I know pretty much the focus has been on optimizing purely the, the manufacturing operations on the shop floor, very much uh, not influencing the, the design of, of the product. And I think here, here's a, the distinction we need to make between value analysis and value engineering. I think many organizations have uh, failed to move beyond value analysis of the current operations, the current products and to go back to value engineering and, and really improve the way uh, we um, solving customers' problems. And part of that is understanding lean as a process of discovery. Um, so many think uh, lean is a process of implementation, particularly if we're considering only the P part of the formula. So if uh, the uh, program knowledge representing uh, the best practices of lean uh, then lean quickly becomes a process of implementation. We implement the practices, we realize the result of lean, and that's not the case. Um, it leads to many failed uh, failed attempts at lean implementation. Now, if on the other hand, we look at lean as a process of discovery, um, we can see that the whole process leading up to delivering a product or service to the customer is opportunities for, for discoveries for improvement. And I think this is critical for uh, for the learning and improvement nature of, of a lean transformation. But if we're going to discover, uh, I mean, again, human humans are very much uh, creatures of habit. Uh, we're very much focusing on delivery and organizations are built uh, based on delivery. So we need someone to help us on the, the journey of discovery. And that's really where the Lean Sensei have came in. Uh, so those that have been successful with Lean uh, are executives that have typically worked with uh, Sensei um, throughout the throughout the, the history of, of their, their Lean transformation. And this is uh, also a recent book that we've written together uh, uh, where we actually followed the path of the Lean Sensei uh, from Taichi Ono and down through the, the various engineers and technical people in Toyota who have helped spread the uh, lean thinking throughout the network of uh, both Toyota overseas operations, Toyota suppliers, uh, and also other, other companies And after that. And again, here we, we emphasize that learning is at the heart of lean. Uh, so lean is more accurately described as an education system rather than a production system. And this is really what's setting the, the condition for, um, for improvement, learning, and discovery within a, a lean organization. But what then is a lean sensei? Well, sensei, um, it's usually a gray-haired chap, uh, like the one you see in the picture here. Um, and they will, they will typically take you to the gamba to see um, the, the, the process as it is in situ. Um, so this is Ish Ishigaka-san uh, from uh, the Toyota, uh, Toyota Dojo in Toyota City in Japan. And uh, so, so the lean sensei will, will Go with you to Gamba and discuss real challenges, often challenging your discipline. So Sensei work with executives, chief executive officers, chief financial officer, um, take them to the Gamba to see the status of the operation. 
and often uh, really challenge the, their discipline and, and their understanding of the job. And during the, these gamble walks, they will give specific exercises. So they will point out particular wastes, uh, particular examples, and challenge you to solve the problem. And in doing so, they, they teach you a PDCA cycle, Plan, Do, Check, Act, always pushing you on to the next step. Now, the interesting thing is that executives often feel uh, a little, uh, yeah, it, it's a strange, it's challenging. I mean, it, it, this guy comes and po points out a, a, a silly example of a, of a waste, but the idea is that we, we have to have this helicopter view. So how does this uh, example itself escalate to the, the strategic uh, direction of the business? And that's, that's what the Sensei helps us do, to discover these problems in real life at the Gamba and take us from strategy to operation and back again. Um, and, it, and, and in doing so, we're really addressing here the, the tertiary uh, uh, example here for, for learning how to learn. So if we start from primary education, uh, we, we begin to learn by copying and learning the meaning of vocabulary. And that's also how many of us learn, uh, begin to learn lean. So we learn the vocabulary. What, what is Kanban? What does Kanban mean? Kaizen. So we copy and learn the meaning of the vocabulary. Secondary education, then, is we, we move on and we learn the facts and the procedures. Um, so, so we would, would learn how, how, how do we begin to implement Kanban? How do we go about Kaizen in problem solving, uh, quality circles, for example, procedures, and also value stream mapping, a, a common procedure to learn uh, within the, the lean uh, uh, movement. But then, we, we are only really impacting the, uh, the core business if we move on to the tertiary education in Lean. And that's learning through experiments and hypothesis testing. Uh, and this is PDCA. So this is in effect what the sensei is there to teach. So, so we say that actually the, the sensei is not a teacher. Uh, he's uh, also not necessarily a coach. And I think this is the, the mistake we've made in, in the West is we've kind of split out all of these different qualities and made different roles for each of these. But the sensei is, a, is all of these rolled into one. It will take you, coach you, train you in, 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 uh, in the plan, do, check, act cycle. And I think that was also the, the misunderstanding of many executives in the West was that when they thought that the uh, sensei was teaching them uh, process improvement techniques, what they were actually doing was using process improvement techniques to teach lean thinking. And it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very key distinctive difference between these two uh, approaches. Um, so then learning through experiments and hypothesis testing is really essential for, for moving on in your lean tra transformations. So down to the lean as a learning system. Many of us are, of course, familiar with the Toyota production system. Um, it's what is uh, visible. It's what we can see when we go visit Toyota uh, plants around the world. Um, and the Toyota production system is really there for helping us to answer the question, how do we learn to satisfy the conditions of the Toyota production system? So it's not a set of principles and practices. It's actually defining the conditions which we strive towards to find and discover better ways of doing things every day. So again, it's going back to that first question that uh, Toyota posed themselves. How do we make a, a better, discover better ways of creating, delivering products to our customers rather than optimizing the system as a whole? So really the difference between static optimization and continuous improvement. Um, but this, this is the one that most people are familiar with when we start our lean journey. But there are also four other uh, learning systems within this uh, learning system itself. Um, so at the top end we see Hoshin Kanri. Okay, so it's the strategy and it's the product centric strategy of, of Toyota. So when we go to Toyota we see that they have their product planning department who are learning to constantly evolve the product lineup. Um, now their vision of course is one-time customer, lifetime customer. <clears throat> so the idea here is to continuously develop and, and evolve the product lineup to, to move along with the times, so, so to really, really discover what is, what is the customer looking for in the next, uh, the next vehicle. Uh, then, of course, once, once we have the idea of what they want, we have to design it. 
and that's the product development system. So Toyota product uh, development system or product and process development system really much based on the uh, chief engineer uh, system, the Schuster system, is understanding how do we learn to create excellent products and services again and again, time after time. Uh, so it's it's very, um, very interesting to see how the chief engineer role is really helping to contribute to, to create value and solve problems for the customer. And again, this is the, the, the difference between TPS and uh, TPD is that, you know, in Toyota production system, we're very much focusing on value analysis. In the product development system, it's the value engineering. So putting what we've learned in the production system, taking that back into the development system for next generation products. The final part of the learning system, of course, is the total quality management system. Uh, now, when uh, most of us see total quality management, we think quality. It's something to do with quality. And of course, we're, we're right. Uh, but actually, the key part of that term is management. How do we manage to ensure, or how do, how do we learn to develop the management to ensure the zero defect uh, mindset throughout the organization? Not just in production, but also in the back office uh, functions in the organization. Um, so these four parts here of the learning system are, are not discrete. Um, they're very much intertwined with each other um, and they should generate learning uh, across each of the different functions, very much uh, part and parcel with the way we should be working with our, our lean implementations. Um, just to summarize, we, have, uh, we can say that an organization with improved capability is an organization that has learned. And I think similarly, we can say that an organization that has, le has learned has the capability to improve. And I think this is very important uh, for those of us uh, perhaps struggling with lean implementation right now, those of us considering whether to even begin with a lean transformation. Um, I think that's, that's also something which is a key uh, discussion topic at the moment, uh, given digitalization and industry 4.0. Uh, but if, unless we're really willing to rethink lean as a learning system, I think great we can uh, we can achieve some uh, quick operational improvements, uh, operational performance improvements. But the true promise of, of lean thinking and practice uh, will never really come to uh, be realised. To summarise, I have a second poll to see if I manage to convince any of you to change your mind. Uh, first is uh, lean is about achieving operational excellence through process optimization and the second choice is lean is about achieving business growth through thinking differently make your choice okay i've just launched that poll daryl mm -hmm. we also had a, uh, a saying back in uh, in Clinethley, peter if you're familiar with it but we said we should we should uh, use our loaf not our bread ah very good <laughs> yes that means we should use our wisdom and not our money huh? that's what kaizen is really all about yeah. thinking differently yeah very good Okay, so we're just waiting for the last couple of votes. Okay, so I think we're, we're probably there. So 18% voted uh, lean is achieving operational excellence through process optimization, and 86% said lean is achieving business growth through thinking differently. Hey, there we go. We, 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 we did something right. We managed to convince some people to rethink lean as a learning system. Huh? I think that ends the, the presentation. We're at the halfway mark, 2.30. Uh, most interesting for me is to hear from uh, 
the participants what 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 questions do you have i mean how can we help uh, you guys uh, well first of all thank you for that uh, daryl uh, some very interesting thoughts there and um what we'll do is we'll open the questions so if you'd like to type your uh, questions uh into the question tab um and then what i'll do is i'll i'll read them out and daryl can give you um a response um while you're having a go at that um just a couple of things from me um i, I was very much put in mind daryl in the presentation of the work of uh, peter Senge and the learning organization fifth yes. discipline yeah. book that um, Definitely. Mm -hmm. I, I, re I first read that in, in 1994. That's when I bought the book and I read the book and, and I'm not sure it really quite made sense to me. I, I couldn't quite understand it. And then I happened to reread that book uh, a couple of years ago and it all made perfect sense to me that you know, what he was trying to do was look at that sort of soft systems approach uh, as a professor yes. at MIT, but you know, it, it very similar to the sort of things that you've been talking about in your presentation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, all, all five disciplines are, are key to, to lean transformation. I mean, we, we start the, the fifth discipline now, of course, was the systems thinking. But yeah. uh, and I think the important part there is to see the, the lean as a complete system. And, and I mean, I don't mean production and supply chain as a system. That's part of the system. We need product development, engineering, customer support, the whole organization as a system. And I think as a learning system, that's that's key to success. Um, but then, then of course, you have the, I mean, personal mastery. Huh? It's, yeah. it's learning as in learning as an individual, and I think that's very much uh, what the work of Revens was first looking at was how to get managers to really gain a deeper understanding of the work which was being carried out by the organisations through a process of uh, combining uh, program knowledge with question insight. Sure, uh, sure. But then, then we have to escalate beyond that personal mastery to to go towards the team learning. So learning as teams, huh? mm, and then finally as the organization as as a whole. Um, <clears throat> but I think also very important from from uh, Senge's work was the mental models. Uh, mm. And I think, uh, it, it, I mean, many of us fall into the trap uh, of. Uh, lean as a set of best practices i mean i i've done it myself huh? sure yeah, but 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 when you learn to see the lean practices as frames for learning uh, or accelerators for learning then you can really start to gain traction in, in improving the organization and the business as a whole sure anyway look we've got a number of questions starting to come in um so i'll i'll sort of read these out so there was a comment right at the beginning of the presentation from Matteo, who says, uh, also was commenting that we need to grow the system as well as the, the people. We need to develop the system, the plan, do, check, act at the system level. I think I'm going to leave that more as a observation rather than... Uh, was it Rossini? Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ciao, Matteo. <laughs> yeah. Um, so question here from Lakshmi. Um, what is the importance of feedback both at people level and at systems level and any lean tips to incorporate in our organization? Yeah, so look, um, I mean, it's when, when you when you read the, the, the literature with, with Toyota, I mean, they, they see the role the, the most important role of a leader is to teach be a teacher for the next generation of leaders and i think this is is uh, this is a key and i mean it's very much part of the feedback and feed forward mechanisms in an organization um is uh, we could we can do a hell of a lot of learning when we're re willing to not necessarily sit down with each other but to to stand together at the gamba and have an adult conversation and I think that's yeah. that's some people talk of it as a learning dialogue, uh, or just going for a chat at the gamba and, and picking out problems and, and questioning why 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 is it that why do we see what we see what we're seeing? Um, I think this this is really a key to, to to succeeding. So you have to you have to focus on the small things. Um, there's no there's no quick there's no quick way of doing it, and this is why it takes so long. Because once once you, you slowly gain traction by focusing on the small problems, the big things fall into place. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it puts me in mind of you know a lot of learning 
that you're talking about is uh, last time I was at um, Toyota factory was the the factory in Derby in in England that that's a yep. car production factory and um, there they have an obey room and the obey room um, it's actually a three-sided room of a corridor one side and 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 basically this room is is the learning journey of their people so yep. from how do we recruit people how do we induct people what does a team member look like a team leader etc and it talks about what what is the system of helping these people to learn and 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 the tools and so forth and the measures and so forth are all about this learning journey so it's very much that lifelong learning uh, session and the other thing that i found with that is when i spoke to the people i say well is this something you copied from japan and they say no no this isn't in japan the, the nowhere in the world and and i think other sites in the west have emulated this because they say in japan this is almost by osmosis and everyone knows this whereas in europe and and maybe the states we we have to make this stuff a bit more explicit in order to yeah. to be able to conceptualize it and and hence what they've done is they've, they've made it explicit and then other sites have, have learned from that so so if anyone gets the chance go and see that uh, example Definitely. anyway question I mean, it's... for you uh, Question for you. So we have a question from Nigel all the way from Australia. So um, yeah, good middle of the night, Nigel, to you. Hi, um, Nigel. So his question is, how would you initiate a conversation when a manager says, I don't have the time to learn, just give me the answer? Wow. Wow. But, I mean, it, of course, it, and this is another thing with, with learning. Learning is completely voluntary. Um, and this is, this is one of the issues we have. I mean, you, you don't have to learn, um, but but with that kind of attitude, I mean, look, I mean, lean lean is for if you, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Uh, many many organisations, many managers, and I think this is also part of the failings for for lean becoming a a new way of of organising businesses. That managers, executives hear about lean. Hey, it's fantastic. It, a lot of promise for our organization they employ a lean manager to do the lean for them yeah? and, I, and i think that's completely in contradiction to to the way in which uh, sensei have worked over the years to really transform the way executives think and operate and, and that it's only then if we're willing to take we have to create the time and the space uh, to learn and to think and to solve problems so uh, with that sort of attitude uh, try something else Lean's not mm. for you. Mm. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, another example I was thinking of is there was a site in Ireland, uh, Roche, um, the pharmaceutical company, and they actually started each of their huddle meetings with what have we learned since the last meeting? Yes. To, yep. to bring out this this learning, etc. Yeah. Anyway, question from Basil here. Um, does the lean, does lean as a, sorry, um, should lean as a system be adapted to industry 4.0 technologies, or is it the other way around? It's both. It's both, right? But I mean, I mean, what I, what I tend to say is lean first, then digitalize. Um, uh, it, the risk you have if you if you if you jump into into bed with digital. I mean, come on, digitalization is sexy, right? Everybody wants digitalization nowadays. But if if we there's, there's nothing so useless really as uh, digitalizing something that doesn't need to be done in the first place um so we we lean thinking actually paves the way for digital transformation but i think on the other side of the coin digital tools and, and digitalization itself actually helps advance lean uh, production so of course they go hand in hand uh, but it's uh, i th i think the uh, the tip is to start thinking lean first. Then you might avoid uh, investing in some uh, some technology that you don't actually need. Sure. Okay, very good. Uh, so a question from Russell. Um, do you favor building capability from the top down or the bottom up or from somewhere in the middle? And how is the capability built differently at these levels? And you only nice have question. three hours for the question, so. <laughs> I take a, I take a 20 minutes on each of the approaches. So for first top down. <laughs> now, I mean, of course, for, from uh, from my experience, I mean, I think we've made we we make quicker 
results if we work from the top down. Um, but then, of course, it it goes hand in hand. So you work with the with the executives on the shop floor together with the operators bottom. So it, it's kind of, yeah, it's not so uh, black and white actually. So I mean, it, but you have to have uh, executive buy-in. They they have to be part of the transformation. So. I mean, we can we can start with a bottom-up approach, and we can gain some pockets of uh, improvement, some pockets of results throughout the organization. But unless we really have the the leadership from the top, uh, then it's going to be difficult to to win the, uh, the the big results, which you first uh, promised with with a lean transformation. Uh, so I mean, we've we've seen it uh, we've seen it all. We've, I mean, we've we've seen companies who are implementing some uh, best practices throughout the production departments and they're seeing some quality improvements some improvements work in process reductions lead time improvement but those organizations that have been led by the top managers on site um, and engaging engineering together with production and together with customer service and sales there we've seen 400% uh, people productivity improvement literally uh, from nowhere. Huh? So we so we need the, the executive uh, buy-in and, and leadership. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so a uh, question from Steve here. Uh, many organizations are obsessed with how many black belts are trained. What is your view about yellow, green and black belt trainers? Beautiful. Beautiful. No, it's, it's, it's yellow, green, black, but it, it's program knowledge. Huh? It's pro, uh, I, I myself have a yellow belt, but uh, I hung it up a long time ago, unfortunately. But uh, I mean, it's, it's a nice way to gain uh, program knowledge, but the real learning comes from the questioning insight, from in practice, right? So when you, when you learn something, there, there's no... <laughs> When you put your your learning in, into action, then you really learn. Um, so I think, yeah, we we didn't uh, during the during the lean um, transformation that I led here in Norway over the past uh, five years, we we didn't go down the belt route. And I know that we've we've chosen not to offer belts uh, within my current company. Um, but of course, if you have them, you've learned you, you've learned some you've gained some program knowledge. Now go put it to use. And really learn and i think that's that learning in action is is the key mm -hmm. yeah i mean on that point i uh, 25 years ago I, was, I i spent three months in the toyota supply chain in japan and and i had a 50 question benchmarking study and you know in every question apart from one you know they were out of sight better than we were seeing in europe and the question that they were worse on was they did less training and I was sort of intrigued. I sort of found their, oh, I found the Achilles here at the Toyota, they do less training. And I thought myself, well, actually, I've got the wrong thinking. It's the same as yeah. how many black belts have I got? It's yes. it's it's a numbers thinking, but actually they get better results with less input, which is actually what, you know, Jim Womack and Dan Jones were talking about all those years ago. And then when I asked another question, I said, what percentage is off the job classroom training and what percentage is on the job? I found it was pretty much 90-10 on the job uh, in Japan and the other way around in Europe. And that was really uh, the difference. It was practical learning, not just, you know, belts in a classroom sort of uh, stuff. Yeah, no, exactly. And I mean, it's they, they do less training, but they do more learning. That's, that's right. I think that that's the way we have to think about it. And when, and when we... When we look at the tools that we're learning, the best practices, the, these are, like I said earlier, it's, it's frames for learning. It's a lens, so it's something we use to, to advance our knowledge. And, and of course, we, what we learn there needs to be redeployed throughout the organization as actionable knowledge, right? So we we're creating new ideas, new thinking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so question here from Miro. Um, what learning systems other than Sensei did you say in, see in Japan? Yeah, TPS. TPS. So when you go, when you when you do the you you do the factory tour in uh, Toyota, anybody can do it. You, you just register online. You go do the the factory tour. You go out. You get a guide. Takes you around the the factory. Shows you, and you you see you see all of the you see the best practices. You see 5S. I mean, they they call it 2S. 
uh, you see Kanban, you see Jiroka, you see Andon, but it's it's not the tools which are the end. I mean, they they are the they are the lens, the frame to see the to see and take part in the learning. Um, so you you always hear something when you go around, and that's part of the learning as well. If you hear something, that there's the problem. That's not a bad thing. Toyota. You say you have to celebrate the problems because these are learning opportunities, right? Um, so so you just go and see it. The whole thing is a learning system. Uh, what 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 really changed my mind? And I, I mean, before before I went there, I thought changing your mind was a bad thing, right? It shows weakness, but actually. <laughs> Changing your mind is, is pretty cool because it shows that you've learned something. Um, and they have, uh, at one point on the tour, they have a, a chassis of a Toyota uh, vehicle. And you can look and you can see all of the holes which are cut and drilled. And, and you can see how everything has been specifically designed to be able to be assembled very effortlessly. So when you watch the people working on the line, it's just like watching them do Tai Chi in the morning. Right? It's, it's one breath, one movement. It's, uh, it's very uh, cool to watch. So simple. Whereas when you go to other factories, you see people struggling, trying to get things to fit together. You see people scratching their heads, talking together, not, not trusting the design information. Uh, so it, it's the whole, the whole system together uh, built for learning and continuous improvement, which is, is really becomes uh, obvious when, when you visit Toyota. Hmm. Okay, very good. Uh, so uh, I think Russell's had first question, but another one from him. Um, how important is it to build a safe place for people to fail? Very important. Very important. If, I mean, it, it's a taboo. It's taboo, right? Uh, we, we, for some reason, when when we when we grow up, failure failure is uh, frowned upon. Uh, I don't know whether it's to do with parenting or what, but. Uh, <laughs> Actually, we should celebrate failure because it, like I said, it's it's a learning opportunity. To so to create this uh, this environment for failure and learning is is critical for success. Um, and at the same time, I mean, you look at you look at the lean startup, Eric Ries. I mean, this is fail fast. Uh, the whole startup culture, it's uh, it's completely different to the way you see large organizations nowadays, which are riddled with big company disease. Uh, when you when you work with a startup, they 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 have this just do it attitude. They want to try things, learn from it, and move on. So if we if we uh, if we take that into account, I think I think feeling safe to learn from failure is is uh, it's uh, it's fundamental for success. Get rid of the blame culture. Very good, very good. So we got a pretty global audience. So we got a question from South Africa now from Lorne. Um, Okay. I'm implementing lean by asking questions to lean to lead persons. Uh, hold on, I'm I'm implementing lean by asking questions to lead people into their own ideas or develop their own ideas. I found that it works mostly, but still the learning does not stick. Any ideas on this? Yeah, so um, a, you've heard of A3, I'm sure. Uh, it's, uh, we we call it a problem solving methodology. But actually, the, the the very design of the A3 itself, it's designed to lock in the learning and create a history. Um, so the way Toyota do it, I mean, you walk around Toyota facilities and occasionally an A3 will catch your eye. It's on display. It's a way they share the learning uh, across the organization and it captures and tells the story from where do we start with understanding the problem, going through the root causes of the problem and implementing uh, one or more countermeasures and then finally capturing that learning and spreading it around around the company. So they call it Toyota business practice. Um, I think Ford uh, called it uh, 8D, the eight disciplines. But uh, in essence, you capture it on an A3 uh, sheet of paper and share that learning. So I think, and 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 if you encourage these um, regular learning dialogues, not just with yourself and leaders, but between leaders themselves, peers, getting them to challenge each other and, and be safe to, I think, uh, again, going back to Russell's point, I mean, you have to create a safe environment to have these learning conversations. Mm. Uh, mm. Everybody has something to learn. 
and, and you have to be quite humble to fail and yes. particularly for senior executives to admit that they failed is is a very difficult uh, difficult very thing difficult. to do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay so uh Albert uh, asks a question here so hi, hi Daryl I uh, I agree to learn, uh, sorry, I agree to lean being all about learning to learn, but doesn't it make it very genetic, generic? This way it sounds uh, a lot like fix everything in life's problems by, by doing this. So life is lean. What, what are your thoughts on this uh, area? I couldn't have said it more beautifully myself, Aldert. Thanks. Life is lean. Yeah, no, I think, and I think actually I can, I'm going to put in a little... Uh, a little sales pitch here. Uh, Peter and I will will, uh, will join a uh, European Operations Management Association conference next week. Uh, we will we will uh, be panelists in a uh, in a special uh, session to discuss uh, the, the the history of lean uh, in in research. But I will also chair my own uh, special session uh, at that conference, which is which is called Saving Lives with Lean. And I really believe that when we look at lean as a learning system, we can use lean thinking and practice to make the world a better place. Um, so the, the whole uh, discussion will be looking at uh, refugee camps, we'll be looking at starvation. Uh, actually, we're framing it around the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals, which are in fact conditions, just like Toyota production system. So Toyota production system def defines conditions which we work towards. And if we look at uh, using lean thinking and practice as a learning system to move towards achieving the UN Sustainability Development Goals, then lean is about uh, continuous learning and uh, improvement. Mm. So it, uh, it works everywhere. Mm. I found one of your old slides, Peter, uh, some weeks ago. Lean would, would never work in a university. What, what do you think about that now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we started uh, we started applying lean in Cardiff University in 2006, and uh, I have to say, you know, we had a lot of success, but it certainly wasn't easy. I mean, the the academic mind is is thought, measured, and rewarded to think independently. So to work as a team was really a difficult thing for the academics. So we had a lot of success with the non-academic. You know the the administrative staff, but but with the academics, it was a it was a tough uh, a tough nut to to crack. <laughs> anyway, um, we have another question uh, from my friend uh, Matthias down there in, in Germany. Um, so he says Toyota started with the guy at the top and built lean along with building the company. Uh, which examples can you give from companies that have made the change towards a learning organization after having first been successful company? that wasn't a learning organization. Yeah, so I mean, you, you, you read uh, Lean Thinking. I always have it uh, handy. I mean, in, in there, we, we, you, you, have some, uh, you have some key examples. And I mean, Jake Brake, part of the Danaher Corporation. We were talking about Danaher before, uh, Peter. Sure, yeah. Um, they, they also using a Sensei from uh, Shingi Jitsu, I believe. Um, really bringing in this new way of thinking and operating and running the business uh, is, is a, a key success story from uh, from a non-automotive, non-learning organization from the, from the outset. Um, there are also other examples, so for example, Wiremold also achieving, I think, up to 700% uh, productivity improvement. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there are so, there are there are there are examples out there in in the in the books. It's mm, uh, it's part mm, of the program knowledge. So we just have mm, to add our questioning mm, insight to learn from mm. it. Then. I think I think as you say, Danaha is an example of this, and uh, so we, we we have a session with the architect of the Dana product, Danaha business system coming up uh, probably in October. So listen in, and we'll uh, we'll talk more about that. Uh, and he's he, he's going to talk about how do you do this. Um, in a brownfield site when many of the Toyota factories are greenfield site. So arguably it's easier if you start with a greenfield site and you can have younger employees, etc. But how do you start with that brownfield uh, site? So we'll wait, wait to hear about that. And so that's um, why we call it a transformation, right? We have to change something. We don't, sure. we don't start by being it. Uh, so. Sure, which is why the Numi example is in many ways the most interesting uh, case in, in Toyota. 
Um, so a question here from uh, Eric. We, we may have covered it, but I, I'll, I'll read it out uh, anyway. It's uh, many companies are struggling with the implementation of their lean system of, uh, and since some years are facing the need for 4.0. How do you what, is there anything more to say about how you might combine the two? Yeah, so I mean, digitalization presents us with a, a whole new uh, toolbox, right? Um, so if, 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 like I said, if we, if we view the lean tools as uh, frames for learning, for, for means of accelerating learning in the organization, then there's no reason why we shouldn't look at the digital tools for, uh, as, as being uh, accelerators for learning as well. Um, but like I said, it, it's, the advice is lean first, then digitalize. So. Right. Okay. Very good. So, so my friend uh, Jacko here, he has a very interesting question, which I might give an answer to as well. Is okay. uh, just a <laughs> random question. Uh, are you and all lean fans also driving a Toyota car to fully embrace the lean learning experience? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> beautiful question. Thanks, Jacko. <laughs> I once I once had a Toyota, yeah? um, so 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 really really I guess you could say Toyota failed in its mission for one-time customer lifetime customer because I went from I did my my bachelor degree which I did in Swansea was motorsport engineering so I had a Toyota MR2 1980 uh, 1981 model it was uh, nearly, yeah it's older than me I think <laughs> and uh, yeah it was a fun car. It was a fun car, but then our lifestyle changes, right? So we move on, and I mean, I, I moved to Norway. I bought a Volvo. We have to have a Volvo estate, a station wagon. Uh, then the family grows, and you need a seven-seater. So, but now I now I drive the BMW. I don't have a car. It's a BMW. <laughs> Very good. Uh, my story is pretty similar. I, I've had Toyota and a little Lexus as well, the, the hybrid and so forth. But I I, I now drive. A little mini, which is actually more environmental because you get more miles per gallon than an electric <laughs> sort of hybrid car and, and so forth. So I, I think there's somewhere in the understanding the, the customer needs that isn't quite right in, in, in their approach. But uh, anyway, good question, Jacko. So we've just got one, uh, one final one from your friend, uh, Matteo. So we'll, we'll just have this one and perhaps we'll wrap up. Um, yeah. So I totally agree with you about considering problems as opportunities for improvement, but how can we create opportunities and not from failure? Yeah, so I mean, I'm not sure if you're aware of uh, the uh, the book that came out of the Lean Enterprise Institute uh, last year called The Four Types of Problems. Uh, so so uh, two of those types are, uh, are deviations from an expected standard. So that's where we're failing to meet what is expected and to mm -hmm. bring us back onto track. Of course, the other types of problems are setting ourselves a stretch target. So we create a problem ourselves. Uh, and I mean, Toyota, they say that uh, no problem is the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you have no problems, if you're not failing at anything, I mean, that, that it's the, you're making things too easy for yourself. Set yourself a stretch target, work towards a next target condition. So create that uh, problem rather than wait for a, a failure to occur. Because, uh, we need to keep moving, right? Mm. If, we, if we stand still, we're going to be overtaken. Mm. Very good. Well, um, time's pretty much up uh, for us. So um, I'd like to thank you very much for that uh, presentation. Maybe I'll give a little round of applause myself. Um, Thanks, Peter. And, um, uh, so I, I hope everyone's enjoyed that and um, thank you again to the presentation and uh, we, we just have a little uh, rating for this particular webinar if you'd like to fill that in and um, we look forward to seeing you in the future with uh, our next series of webinars which you can see on the, the webinar link on um, uh, Enterprise Excellence uh, Network. So. Um, Thanks for listening. Hope you found it useful. Um, we, we have been recording this uh, session as well, and we will be posting that uh, through that same site um, into um, YouTube. So if uh, any of your colleagues want to listen in, uh, uh, feel free to click through uh, on that as well. So Perfect. Emma, would you like to add anything or? Um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much wrapped up um, from from our side. So thank you everyone for attending, and uh, especially thank you Daryl for the, the excellent presentation. Um, we.
Thank you very much. So yes, as Peter mentioned, you can find our webinars and um, future ones on our website, um, which will also be um, in a link via the follow up emails. Um, so yes, thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank See you Monday, uh, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> See you. Bye, Darrell. Bye. Bye, everyone.